So I want to talk some more about trigonometric integrals, but I want to change the direction a little bit. We've done lots of examples focusing on uh, combinations of sines and cosines, and I think we've basically done all the ones we need to. That is to say that any other examples you'll run across, like in the homework or in exams or wherever else, uh, you, you, if you've been practicing these ones so far, you have the skill set necessary to handle those ones as well. So I want to switch over to trigonometric functions that use tangents and secants. Um, and so before we jump into them, let, let me remind you of some of the important identities one should know involving tangents and secants. The reason tangent and secant become such good friends is, first of all, the derivative of tangent is secant squared, right? Uh, the derivative of secant is tangent and secant. So notice taking the derivatives of tangent and secant involves tangents and secants themselves. This is useful observation when one tries to do a u substitution. And then also the Pythagorean relationship connects tangent and secants together. Tangent squared plus one is equal to secant squared. One can see this identity by taking the standard sine squared plus cosine squared equals one and dividing everything by cosine squared. All right, so how does one find an antiderivative of an integral using sine or using tangents and secants? Well, one possibility is you could switch everything to sines and cosines. That's always a possibility. Um, I, I, I tell that to students in basic trigonometry if you're trying to prove identities. It works here as well. Um, tangent squared does become a tangent to the sixth, excuse me, becomes a sine to the sixth over cosine to the sixth. Um, and then you also get this one over cosine to the fourth x dx. You could combine that together, take sine to the sixth over cosine to the tenth um, and try to do something with that. I would say that that is a much more difficult approach, although doable. Uh, I, the fact that we have secants and tangents here is actually our advantage. And so let's try that right here. So when we worked with sines and cosines in the past, the idea is, is there some way we could utilize a u substitution, right? And so if we're going to use a u substitution, we want to look for specific du's, the derivatives of functions like secant squared or tangent and secant. Now, when you have in your integral, looking at this right here, if the power of secant is an even number, which, aha, uh -huh, we have a four right there. If you have an even number of secants, my recommendation is to use this identity right here and set this equal to du. That is, you want du to equal secant squared dx. Now, if du is equal to secant squared, that means u should equal tangent. And so let's see what we have right here. We do have six tangents. That right there would equate to be a u to the sixth. What about the secant to the fourth? Well, it breaks up into two pieces. There's a secant squared x times a secant squared x. Now the first secant, or well, the first or the second doesn't matter. One of the secant squareds we're going to set aside as our du. But what do we do with the other secant squared? It can't be a du as well, because then we'd have like a du squared. Nah, -uh, we don't want that. Well, that's where the Pythagorean identity comes into play. Secant squared is the same thing as a tangent squared plus one. So we can convert all the secants into tangents. And so if we see what happens there, like I said, your, your tangent to the sixth will become a u to the sixth then one of the secant squareds will become a u squared plus one. Uh, it's a tangent squared plus one, but remember tangent is u right now. And then the other secant squared becomes a du. So we're able to convert this trigonometric function into a polynomial function using this u substitution. Uh, distributing the u to the sixth throughout here, we have a very nice polynomial, uh, u to the eighth plus u to the sixth du. And from here, using the power rule, for antiderivatives, we can very easily find out the antiderivative will be 1 9th u to the 9 plus 1 7th u to the 7 plus a constant. And then remembering that u itself is just tangent of x, we substitute that back in to get 1 9th tangent to the 9th x plus 1 7th tangent to the 7th x plus a constant. And then this gives us our antiderivative right here. And so I want you to mimic this strategy on future examples. If you're trying to integrate a product of tangent and secant, and you have an even number of secants, take u to be tangent and du to be secant squared, and you should probably be just fine.